Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mrs. Zabrock. Well, third grade, you may be seated. We are going to do a lesson today from class book three. And I want to talk to you today about a little tiny animal. I'm not sure if you've ever seen a mole, the animal a mole. Have you ever seen one? Have you? Yep. Yes? You yes. have? Well, let's take a look at him. You know, he has a thick body. And can you see his head? You see it right there? It's pointy, isn't it? Yes. Now his fur is soft as velvet. Have you ever felt velvet? Yes. No. I should have worn something velvet today so that you could feel it. It's very soft. Very, very soft. Now, this mole happens to be the largest that there is. And it says on here that he ranges uh, between five and seven and a half inches. How big do you think seven and a half inches is? Well, you know what a ruler looks like, right? And if you go half of a ruler, that would be how many inches? About Six. Six. So it's just a little bit more than half a foot. Speak. Yes, and he could go, he can go to to seven and a half inches. So this is the biggest one. Now look at this. This is the smallest. Okay. The smallest mole is about three inches. The smallest new wow. world. Wow. That was like this big. Yes, the smallest new world. Mole. So it'd be about this big? It's cute. It's about three inches. So from here to here is about an inch. One, two, three. He's about three inches long. He's tiny, isn't he? And look at that map. Hain, looking at that map, where would we find the mole? Would we find it here in Oregon? Mm -hmm. Yes, we would. This mole, this shrew mole, is part of the Pacific Northwest. Now, this fellow. Does he look a little bit different from the other mole? Yes. What looks, what looks different about him? So. His nose. Look at the nose. You can see his claws a little bit You can see the claws a little bit better, but what, what kind of shape? It kind of looks like a flower. Kind of looks like, like a, a dragon. Flower. A dragon? Yes, yeah, that's his side, that's his mouth. It, it, they call him a star. Nosed. Yes. Star nosed. Star nosed mole, yes. I've called a star nosed mole that had five. Yes, well, but it is kind of different, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to read a lesson today uh, about a mole. Now, they have front feet that are unusually large. Remember this picture? Look at his front feet compared to his back feet. Mm -hmm. They're unusually large, aren't they? Yeah. They use their front feet like shovels to dig holes and they build burrows under the ground. Now some people don't like moles because they burrow under the ground. They dig out. Yeah, they dig up gardens. That wouldn't be good, would it? They make holes in your lawn and they tunnel underground. Yeah, Miss Beeson had that problem. Mm -hmm. She had like tons of moles. Yeah. Now, interesting. Can you see his eyes? No. No. Are they blind? They usually say that that moles are they're blind. practically blind. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have very acute sense of smell. What, so it's an acute sense of smell. Do you, do you think he can really smell a lot? Yes. Yes. He can smell a worm. He can, they, and he does. Mm -hmm. That's what he eats. Good. Yeah. Moles are mammals. Are you a mammal? Yes. But you're not a mole. No. No. <laughs> no. No. Moles are mammals. 
and that, so we talked about the, mam the mole that lives here in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to read a story today about the mole. So I'm going to start with you. Ronick, if you would take a book and then pass the rest of the books on, please. And Hane, what do you need to say to Ronick? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for turning them. Thank you. And thank you. All right, so we are looking at lesson uh, 25 in my book and in your book. Uh, we're looking at page 40. Page 40. Is that going to be before or after 25? Um, after. After 25. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get started on this story, I want to talk to you about some words. You know that two O's with a macron say ooh. ooh. O U can also make the sound of ooh in French words. For example, bouquet? at the table, at, yes, what was that word? Bouquet. Bouquet. If you have a, a group of flowers, oh. group, O-U, says soup. ooh in group, soup. and soup, and a bouquet. And if you do it every day, we have this special routine, routine that we go through. Yes, those are w words where O-U says ooh because they're from the French language. Now, have you ever heard of the word gallery? Yes. What, do you know what a gallery is? is? Art Tell me. gallery is where pictures are shown. An art gallery, yes. And so it's a large hall, isn't it? It's placed above the lower level. You can, you, you can see over the gallery. Yes. Have you ever heard of a gallery? Where? I'm, I've gone to some art galleries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, what about a shovel? Okay. What would you use a shovel to do? To dig. To dig. What would you dig? Um, rock. Mm-hmm. Dig rocks. Dig dirt. Hmm. Um, dig up earthworms. Right. Dig what up. if you dug up? What if you were digging up fossils? Oh. Dig up flowers because you don't like them, and, and or if you want to put them in a different. Dig up yes. weeds. You could dig up weeds. If you dug up fossils, what would your job be? Do you know? Um, no, I forget the word. Archaeologist. Archaeologist. Yes. Very good. Yes. Now, if something is here, and then poof, it's gone. Where? What is that? What would that word be? It has vanished. Vanished. That's a good word. It has disappeared. Mm. I like something. But if I don't like it, can you give me a word for that? I don't I like it. I dislike it. Mm -hmm. There aren't many things that I dislike. And then we were talking about um, flowers in the yard. And what did the moles do? The, the grass. What's another word for grass outside? Um, a lawn. A lawn. Very good. So it sounds like you, you really know these words. before. We, uh, I want you to keep your finger on the page where it talks about the mole. And we're going to go back to the very beginning where our chart is. Okay. So I have my finger in the page where it says the mole. Because I'm going to go there, but we're going to look at this page. And we're going to say the sounds of our consonants. We're going to go across, so you're going to need to run your finger across like a little train so you don't get lost. We're going to say just the sound. Oh, wrong page. Flip one over. Do the sounds, that, the letters that do not change their sounds first. Are you ready? Let's say them. Ready? Begin. Ba, ga, ta, fa, ka, ja, ha, da, na, el. Oh, hold on. Let's go back to the cranky person that says no, the nasty person that says no. Mm. Mm. O, o, very good. Ba, ba, ka, m, m, x, qua, pa, wa, sa, er, ya, ya za. za. Good. 
and then we have the letters that do change their sounds, and they are A, A E, e I, I, O, U. U. All right, turn the page. On the next page, we have uh, a vowel chart, and it, this is a very simple vowel chart compared to the one that, that you're used to doing. But can we do this chart going down, point with our finger? Ready? Begin. A, a with another vowel, vowel says, says A. A, R is the high pitch of A. E, I, G, H is the low pitch of A. A accent says A. A, Y says A. A alone says A. A before a double consonant says A. A, R says R. A, R, R says A, R. A, W says A. A, U says A. A, U, G, H says A. A-L-L -L says all, A-L says all. Very nice. Next column. E with another vowel says E. E-I is the high pitch of E. E-E -E is the middle pitch of E. E-A is the low pitch of E. E accent says E. E-Y says E. E alone says E. E before a double consonant says E. E-R says er. E-R-R says er. E W says U, E U says U, E D says Ed, Da, and Ta. E I G H says A. And we do the next column. Let's put a little bit more rhythm into our voice as we do it. I with another vowel says I. I G H says I. I accented says I. I alone says E. I alone before a double consonant says E. I R says Er. I R R says I R. I G H says I. I L D says I. I N D says I. I N G says ing. Wonderful. Last next one. O with another vowel says O. O A is a low pitch of O. O accent says O. O Y O I says oi. O alone says A. O before a double consonant says A. Uh. O R says OR. O R E says OR. O R R says uh, er. O W says L. O U says OW. O O the Macron says OO. OO as in moon. O O with the breath says U uh, as in book. O L D says OLD. O U L D says OOD. O U G H says off, off. O off, ooh, ow. Wow. O U G H T says ought. O W with the double cross off says O. U with another vowel says U. U I is the high pitch of U. U accent says U. U alone says a. Uh. U before a double consonant says a. Uh. U R says er. U R R says uh er. Very nicely done. All right, so we are going to look at the story of the mole. All right, can we? Would we start with you? I would like you to read the first sentence for me. And when you read it, I want you to read rhythmically, emphasize the key word, okay? The mole is a tiny animal. What does this sentence tell? The size of the mole. The size of the mole, thank you. Next sentence. It is only six inches long. What does it tell? The, the length. Of the mole. Good, the length of the mole. So after each sentence, when you read the sentence, then tell me what the sentence tells. You're giving me the title. Okay? It has dark gray fur. Tells the color of the mole's fur. The color of the mole's fur? Mm -hmm. Its fur is soft. The texture of the mole's fur. Texture, yes. Its fur feels like silk. Mm. Feeling of the of its fur, but if you talk about the feeling of its fur, you know, because I I might be feeling happy or feeling sad, so that's not quite right. The texture. It is kind of like the texture, it, but it feels like silk. So it could be the texture, or it could be the quality, oh. right, of the the fur. 
Does something have to be quite small in order to be called tiny? Yes. Yes, I yes. think so. Let's okay. read back, look back at what we read here. Um, is the color of its fur quite lovely? No. Okay, what makes it not lovely, do you think? Like it's dark and gray. So you don't think dark and gray is lovely? Most people don't. They okay. It could be lovely. It depends on who you ask. Oh uh, yes, it does and depend who on are. who you ask and who you are. So this mole has um, dark, gray, soft fur that feels like silk. silk. Oh, you don't think that that's going to be lovely for? Mm, I think it could be. It could be, but you have you have the right to your opinion. Mostly because I choose bright colors. Oh, you prefer mm. bright colors. Overdone. Mm. Okay, well that is certainly an opinion, isn't it? So if we were to put a title on this paragraph, Payne, do you think you might be able to come up with a title for me? What are all of those sentences telling us? Um, the description of the mall? Very nicely done, the description of the mall. Let's read that first paragraph together. Ready? Yeah. Begin. The, the mole, mole is, is a, a tiny animal. animal. It, it is, is only six inches long. It has dark gray fur. Its fur is soft. Its fur feels like silk. I'm trying not to rush it. Let's read it one more time. Ready? Begin. The, the mole, mole is a tiny animal. animal. It, it is, is only six inches long. It has dark gray fur. Its fur is soft. Its fur feels like silk. Now, can you remember the sentence that you, without looking, can you remember the sentence that you read? The mole is a tiny animal. It is only six inches long. It has a dark gray fur. Its fur is soft. Its fur feels like silk. All right, so now let's look at our next paragraph. Oop. And we're ready to read the next sentence. The mole has a little pink tail that is about one Inch long. Well, let's go back to that first sentence. You said the mole has a little pink tail that is about one inch long. Wow. It's about this big? This, the size of the mole's tail? Yes. Is it a very short tail? Yes. Yeah. Do you think that might be unusual? Yes. For, for, like, for, for a like large a mole, mole that was like this big. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that the tail is bare yes. unusual? Yes, it says it has, doesn't have any fur on it. The tail is bare. bare. The animal is covered with beautiful fur, but is his tail covered with fur? No. 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 What does this paragraph tell us? Um, the, the bareness it's, of its... It's the whole paragraph. Its, oh. it's telling about the tail. Yeah, so this is the a description of the tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the description of the mole. But the make tail. sure it's not like a tail, like T-A-L-E. Oh, true. Right. Yes. The fairy tail. Yes, but we're talking about the tail of the mole. All right, so you two read. Let's see if we can just quickly finish this next paragraph, and then we'll go on. Tria? The mole does not have any neck. What does this sentence tell? That it does not have any neck. The body part it does not have. Oh, the body part it does <laughs> not have. So if it, if it doesn't have something, so for, say for example, one of you was not here. Oh, so you were saying the lack of? Of a neck. The lack of a neck. Or I was going to say when someone's not present, they are absent. absent. So this would be the, the absence, absence of a neck. Mm -hmm. Next sentence. You cannot see the ears of the mole. Oh. So what does this tell? The, the part of the body that you cannot, cannot see. Okay. If you can't see it, where is it? That is invisible. They are it's, well, they're not really invisible. They're, they are hidden. Yeah. They're are they hidden. hidden. Yes. So we have the, the hidden ears. All right, next sentence. They are hidden under the fur. <gasps> oh. It 
So does this tell, what does this tell us? It tells us where it's the location of the ears. The location of the ears, yes. Or it might tell us the... The location where the ears are hidden. But it says if you can't see the, the mole's ears, they're hidden under the fur. The, does this tell us the, the reason? The reason you can't see the ears. Why can't you see the ears? Because they're, they're under, under the fur. fur. They're under the fur. The mole uh, does not see well. What does that sentence tell us? Um, it's, um, we it's can't see like. That. All right, so when you see, you have either good or poor eye sight. Eyesight. Eyesight. The poor, the poor eyesight, eyesight of the mole? Yes, so should we put glasses on him? No. no. <laughs> he'd, he'd look kind of funny. Well, actually, most of the, only one person doesn't have glasses. Oh, that's right. Table. Last sentence, let's read it together. It lives so, so much, much in the dark, dark that, that it, it doesn't, doesn't need, need to see. see. What does this sentence tell us? It tells the reason it doesn't need to see. The reason he doesn't need to see, or the reason he has uh, maybe the reason he has poor eyesight? Yeah. Yes. So can we read that whole paragraph together? Ready? Begin. The, the mole, mole does, does not have, have any neck. neck. You, you cannot, cannot see the ears of the mole. mole. They, they are, are hidden, hidden under the fur. fur. The, the mole does, does not see well. He lives so much in the dark that it doesn't need, need to see. see. Did you enjoy that lesson? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, now I want you to close your book. And before we move on to our next lesson, can you tell me what color the mole's tail was? Pink. Pink. And what was unusual about the tail? It had bear. no fur. It has no fur. It was bear. bear. What, was, what else does the mole lack? Um, uh, Hold on. A neck. neck. It lacks a neck. And it, what else, pain does it lack? Ears. Well, it lacks ears. The ears are hidden. He actually has them. And where are they hidden? Under his fur. Under his fur. And he has very poor eyesight. 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 Yes. Did you? So we're going to close our books. And I'm going to ask you to pass the books around so that um, they end up right over here. Can you do that for me? Very nice, thank you. Did you enjoy that lesson? Yes. 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 So we'll do another lesson now. Did you if you enjoyed the lesson, what can you say to me? Thank, thank you for the lesson, Mrs. Abrock. Thank you for being here. Now we are going to do a math lesson, so I have to change out my books. <laughs> And you'll need a little bit of paper. Oh, Thank mine. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. You don't need it right now. Just leave the pile. Leave the pile. Thank you for being so patient. Leave them. Put your hands in your lap. All right, we are going to do a lesson from the language of numbers. And this is lesson 56 and a few other following lessons. You have some chips in front of you. What I'd like you to do is take out some of those, and I want you to show me two groups of three. Can you show me that? 
So take those discs out and show me two groups of three. And then you could just put the bag off to the side. So you can put it on top of your paper. Put it on your paper. Now, I really want to be able to see the two groups with three in each group. Can you separate them so that I can physically see that there are three in that group? May I use move yours for you, Marcel? So something like that. So you have two groups of three. How many threes do you have? Two. Two, two threes. Two times you have three. We have three and? Six. No, you have three and three, right? Three plus three will give us six. Can you show me three groups of two? Three groups of two. Did you have to get any more coins out of your bag? No. No? So now you have, how much is in one group? Two. Two, two and? Two. Two and? Two. 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 How many two, th twos do you have? Three you have three two. twos. Three times you have two. Six. It's six. So if you know that three times two is six, then you know that two times three will be six. six. Look at this picture. How many twos are in six? Three. Three two. twos. Make your picture again show two groups of three. How many threes do you have? Two, two threes. threes. There are two threes in six. So now let's put our little discs off to the side and I'm going to give you pencils. Should we put them in our bag? You may, but you may need them again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank and you. you're welcome. We're going to write on our paper. Uh, so six times I have three. And we're writing these horizontally. Six times three is how much? Twelve. Oh, no, eighteen. Oh, is it twelve or eighteen? Eighteen. Eighteen. Can you prove it? Six and six is twelve, and six more will be eighteen. Six times three is eighteen. Underneath it, what will? Let's turn it around, and we have three times six equals eighteen. We know that that's true because the order didn't change, did it? The order of the factors does the, not change the product. The order changed, but the order of the factors does not change the product. All right, skip a line. Not yet. Seven times three equals 21. If 7 times 3 equals 21, then 3, three times, times seven, 7 equals 21. 21. Skip a line. 8 Two times nine. I have three. 3. So 8 times 3 is 24. 24. How much is 3 times 8? 24. 24. What? 8 times 3 is 20. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 8 is 24. 24. How can we prove that? Eight, 3 times I have 8. So it's 8, eight and 8 is 16, 16, and 8 more is 24. 
Okay. All right, I'm going to have you skip a line, and I would like you to put nine dots. On the first dot, you ready? Okay. Five. Tell me what you're writing so I know you've five, got it. Five. five. Move to your next dot. Four. Four. Move. Seven. Seven. Move. Three. Three. Move. Six. Six. Nine. Nine. Three. 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 Twenty-three. Twenty-three. All right, now I want you to go back and multiply each one of those by three. So we write times three. Draw the line that says make and write the answer. Please make sure that you have your numbers in the right houses. Oh, I duplicated several, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Three times. Sorry about that. It's okay. I guess my gl I guess I'm the one with the poor eyesight. Mm -hmm. Oh, the mole. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I see where you <laughs> do that. Well, it's kind of interesting. Maybe you're just trying to trick us or something. Mm. Let's see. Oh, and you're all finished? Just almost about. Almost. Almost. Well done. Very well done. All right. So now, I heard you use the word factor, didn't you? Yes. The answer when you divide is called the quotient. quotient. Oh, you don't need to shout. <laughs> the answer when you multiply is the product. And when you add, it's called the sum. And when you subtract, the answer is the remainder. The remainder. All right, so here I have some words for you on cards. I don't know if they're coming to you in any particular order, but let's see what happens. We're going to look at these words. And let's see what we have here. Some of them are written in printing, some are in cursive. Oh, let's see what we have. Wow. All right, let me see. Um, try and pick, read one that you have there. What does it say? Putting together things that are the same. Putting together, now you might have your own answer. Look at the cards you have. Putting together things that are the same, what would that be? What should he look for in his cards? Addition. Do you have addition? Putting together things that are the same. Oh, he's got them. Putting together things that are the same is? Addition. Addition. Um, Marcella, what's one that you have? Um, taking away lesser things from greater things. Taking away lesser things from greater things. What's she looking for? Subtraction. 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 Does anybody have the word subtraction? I have the word um, repeated subtraction. That's not what we need yet. Who has subtraction? I think I got Uh-oh. Is one missing? It might be in mine. Nobody has subtraction? No, I, I might have it. 
Yeah, it's uh, subtracting value. Oh, you have it. So this goes with. Where is your answer? Where was your answer? Taking away. What is subtraction? Taking away lesser things from greater things. Right. Uh, what's one of yours that you have? The answer to a division problem. Oh, does anybody have that? The answer to a division problem. Um, what's the answer to a division problem? Quotient. 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 Who has quotient? Oh, I, I think. You have quotient. Very good. All right, read one of yours. Um, 3 plus n. 3 plus n. Ooh. Algebra? It is part of algebra. What does this little n? Number needed. It is a number needed. Very good. It's a variable. So if we have 3 plus some number, is this a sentence? Yes. Number sentence. It is. Where's the if it's an equation, does it have a verb? Does it have an equal sign? No. no. So it can't be a numerical equation, so it must be a, repeated addition. a numerical expression. expression. Very good. This is a numerical expression. Ooh, Hain, what's one of yours? Taking one thing many times. Taking away one thing many times. Repeated subtraction. <gasps> repeated subtraction. I repeated it. Is there anything else that might go with that? Oh, it says taking, taking one, one thing many times. times. Taking division? one thing many times is division. <laughs> it's division. What's another one that we have? Four times three equals twelve. Multiple and you got times that times one, don't you? <laughs> yes. It's a numerical equation. <laughs> what else do you have? Quickly. I have um, this. I have this. Multiplication I have this. What do you have? Product. Who's got the answer? I, I Product. Do. What is it? I, the answer to a multiplication. The answer to a multiplication question. Who has something in printing? Um, I don't know. What do you have, Hain, in printing? One of them. Variable. Variable. Um, something that's going to change. It's the number needed, which is the variable. You can see it. What is it? The letter N, N. or the letter X, or whatever it, it wants to it be. It's more like an X to me. Um, yeah, more like an X. So else? Anybody have something else in printing? Quickly. Um, remainder. What's the remainder? The answer to a subtraction problem. The answer to a subtraction problem. I, anyone? Subtraction? Um, the answer no. to a subtraction problem? No. I have the takeaway sign. Oh, what's the takeaway sign? This. Yes, but what is the takeaway sign? Um, a minus. minus. Sign. Who has minus? Oh. A couple of them may have disappeared. Left over from another class. One more printed one. Some. Some. Um, um, the answer to an addition problem. The answer to an addition problem. I have one. What do you have? Multiplication. Multiplication. Who is the product? What is multiplication? Um. Factor. I'm not sure. Hmm. What do you have? Um. Repeated addition. Oh. Repeated add o. Addition. Repeated addition is multiplication. What do you have? Difference between. What's the difference between? Mm, that which is left. Mm. Difference between. The difference between, is it a subtraction question? Is it taking a lesser number from a greater number? Yes. yes. What else do we have? Undoes multiplication. What undoes multiplication? It was one that we already did. Division. 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 And what do you have? I the other one. A symbol used to represent a number. What was a symbol used to represent a number? A variable. Good. I have undoes addition. What undoes addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. Yes, we used subtraction already. And what do you have? A repeated subtraction. 
What is repeated subtraction? Um, I'm going to take away three, take away three, take away three, take, take away three. Entrance. Division. Division. And this is the number of things separated into piles with the same amount in each pile. What's division? That's division. Yeah, so some of these are used over and over again, aren't they? You were trying to match one on one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Was that fun? Yes. Yes, you know, you know your vocabulary very well. And I think I know my math very really well. You think you know your math really well? I know my 14 times 3. Well, before we do the, f can we count by fours? We're going to start at zero and go to 52. We're going to count by fours. Ready? Zero. Oh, Twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty, forty-four, forty-eight, fifty-two. Ooh, nicely 50, done. Six, 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 well, I, but I asked you to stop at fifty-two, didn't I? Yes. Yes, I did. All right. So on our paper, let's go back and let's write that um, the fours. Oops, this was the broken pencil. And so we're going to start at zero. And can we write by fours, starting at zero, and go to 52? Zero, four, four eight, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six, forty. 44, 48, 52. And I want you to look at those numbers. Don't say anything. I want you to look. Can you see a pattern? Yes. Okay. Yes. Think about it because I'm going to ask you to tell me what pattern you see. All right, what pattern do you see? I see it's like... It each, so the first numbers have four and eight, and then two and six, and then zero, and then four. Then four and eight, eight two and, and six, six, zero. Four and eight, two, and what would the next number end in? Two. We have 52, our next number would end in? Six. Six, and then there would be something ending in a zero. Very good. Anybody else see another pattern? My pencil broke. What else do you see? Thank you. Um, that, that every twenty, the number the the um that that the ones every um ten um I don't know what to say. Don't think about it. It's hard to explain stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially if you're on camera. Now, you mentioned that the ending digits were 0, 4, 8, yeah. 2, and 6. What do we know about all of those numbers? They're skipped counted by 4. They're all even. So what do you notice about all of these numbers? They're even. They're all even. Yeah, so we have a couple of different patterns in there with our four times table. We talked about um, two times three being the same as three times six, and you mentioned the word property. Do you know what property that shows? Commutative. Commutative. Property. Yes, it's the commutative property of addition multiplication. of multiplication. If I know that two times three is six, then the commutative property will tell me that three times two is six. If I know that five times four is twenty, how much is four times five? Twenty. It shows me by the commutative property. Have you ever commuted anywhere? You ever heard that word, commute? No. No? No. no. Does your dad commute to work? Um, you mean go to work? Does he go to work? Yes. yes. My 
dad doesn't. He works at home. He works at home. So he doesn't have a commute. That's nice. Does your dad work far away from home? Um, a little bit. My mom doesn't, but my dad somewhat does. Right. Does he take Max to get to work, or does he drive? Drive. Drive. So he commutes to work. Drives? To he drives to work. He travels from one place, to and then he comes back. He's at your house. He's dad. Like going back he goes to work. To work. And he comes back. Like going back. Is he still dad? Yes. 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 Didn't matter, did he? So it's like going back and forth. To go to commute is to go back and forth. But it's still the same. Still the same. I used to commute between Oregon and California. How do you think I did that commute? I did. I flew because it was a little too far you to drive. Flew and came That's back. right. Yes. So oh. I. So do you think I had a long commute or a short commute? Long. A long commute. Now, if I just lived uh, across the street, would it be a long commute to school or a short commute? No. A short, a short, a short yeah. commute. Short. That's right. Walking to school would be a lot easier, wouldn't yeah. it? Well, we're going to go back to our commutative property. And I want you to write on your paper three times. And we're going to use a variable. We're going to use the cursive n. Three times, and we're using the cursive n, equals 21. And when I read that, I can read it different ways. Hain, could you read My it one way broke. to me? Thank you. Three times n equals 21. Three times n equals 21. Could you also, couldn't you also say n times 3 equals 21? Well, no, that would be reading the other direction. Uh, I could say 3 times some number equals 21, because that's what that n stands for, some number. Numbers. So if we go on to the next line and I write my n equals... What, num what number is needed to go in there to make the se sentence true? Seven. Seven. It's a 7. N equals 7. Let's go off to the right. And this time I'm going to write N times 3 equals 21. So this is the one that you asked me about, Ronick. Mm -hmm. Some number times 3 equals 21. And what number goes in that spot? Seven. seven. N equals seven. Yes. Can you hold your pencil properly for me? Thank you very much. So N stands for some number. Let's go back to the margin and skip a line. Four times N equals 24. Hain, do you know what that N stands for? Six. It stands for six. Why? Because four times six is twenty-four. Four times six equals twenty-four. What, and we're going to write one more. We'll write it under, uh, going off to the right. It's going to be a tough one. You have to think about this one. Eleven times some number equals 33. Three. <laughs> <laughs> How is that hard? Oh, it wasn't difficult for you? Yeah. yeah. It was too easy. It was too easy. Yeah, oh, then before I send you um, back to your seats, I'm going to give you a harder one to do. Yeah, this should be good. It should be good, huh? Is it going to do 12 <laughs> times something? All right, so go back to the margin, skip a line. I'm going to give you each a different question to do. Okay. All right. Should we set up a three dots right now? No, I'm going to give you each a different question. I need three dots because I'm giving you different questions. I want to make sure I give everybody the right question. 
I hope it's not going to be too hard. I want you to tell me, I want you to write the question. 23 times 2. You ready? 43 times 2. Your turn. 23 times 3. Your question. 44 times 2. Your question. I just, I gave each of you one question. I gave each of you one question to do. Um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of 34 times 2. Okay, do you have yours? What was your question? 23 times 2. And how much did you say that was? 46. Can you tell me why? Because 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4. But is it really a 2 over here? What is it? It's a 22 times 20 is 40. Yes, and 40 and 6 would give me 46. All right, Marcella, next one. Um, what was yours? What was your question? Uh, 43 times 2. And how much is 43 times 2? 87. Why? Because 3 times 2. 2 times 3 two is? 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times is it a 4? 40 is 80, and that gives me 80 and 6, which is 86. Okay. What was your question? 23 times 3. And your answer was? 69. Prove it. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 20 is 60. Okay. My question was 44 times 2. And your answer was? 88. Prove it. 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 40 is 80. All right, the last one, and what was yours? 34 times 2. And your answer was? 68. Prove it. Two, 2 times 4 is 8, and 2 times 30 is 60. Very good. All right, let's put our chips bag in the bag. You did that. And if you pass the bags all around to the end over here by Ronick. Mm -hmm. And I'll put them down on the floor. Thank you. Thank you for the lesson. You're welcome.